Okay, so thank you very much, Michele. So I'm very happy to present you today this, uh, this work about uh, simulation of electrochemical systems and how we, how we model the, these interfaces. First, I would like to uh, acknowledge people who worked on, uh, on this project. So uh, what I will present you today was mostly done by uh, some uh, PhD students. So Laura Scalfi, uh, who worked on the uh, Thomas Fermi electrodes with uh, Thomas Dufis. And uh, then Alessandra Serva did a lot of uh, the simulations with uh, Roxanne Bertin. And, uh, and I would like also to acknowledge uh, uh, more particularly Mathieu Eiffel and Abel Marin Laflèche, who uh, participated a lot to the development of the code. And of course, all the other people who participate to the, to the project. So our objective in general is to study electrochemical systems. And in particular, we, we target electrochemical energy storage devices. And the two main families of device that, um, that are interesting for such purpose are supercapacitors, which are also the simplest one because we, um, there is no chemical reaction in such systems. So it's mostly due to the absorption of ions at the surface of electrodes. So, we mostly target uh, this kind of devices for the moment. But of course, there is a strong interest for lithium ion batteries uh, because these are a lot used in uh, nowadays applications. Uh, in that case, the double layer is less important, but there are more and more studies on understanding what's happening in these kind of systems. And so, of course, there are a lot of different um, uh, chemical processes that can occur at, uh, in such system. I already mentioned the absorption of ions inside the double layer. There can be some uh, redox reactions. So in particular, uh, in lithium ion batteries, you will have the formation of, um, of, uh, of species at the surface of the electrode. And they can also crystallize that will also affect the properties of the device. And so this, for studying all these, uh, these effects, experiments are not very easy to, to manage because of the, because it's not, uh, they are not, well adapted to the study of interfaces. And so this is where molecular dynamic simulations can be very efficient. Uh, so the idea is to be able to simulate all these, uh, most of these events at least using um, an efficient method. And of course the difficulty here is that we are tackling with two sides of an interface. On the one hand, we have uh, um, an electrode. So the, uh, everything is governed by the, by the electronic structure. On the right, you have um, uh, an electrolyte in which, of course, electronic structure will play an important role. But in general, you can uh, tackle everything much uh, very well using uh, statistical mechanics and uh, classical methods. And so you have to um, you have to to link these two worlds. DFT simulations are more and more uh, used to simulate such systems. But the difficulty is that you have large concentration of ions long relaxation time. So typically absorption times are, can be much longer than uh, the nanosecond time scale. And also fixing the electrode potential is not so easy in, uh, in, uh, in DFT calculations. There are some, um, some new methods that are developed, but uh, for the moment, it's not so easy. Of course, on the other side, the classical simulations are not very good at simulating uh, electrons, but we saw in the previous talk that um, it's possible to have some tricks to, to manage uh, this a little bit. And so I will show you a, a, different, uh, a different approach, which is not uh, data-driven, but uh, uh, trying to, to, to reproduce the physics of the system. And this was proposed uh, more than, uh, well, again, uh, a quarter of a century ago by, um, by Michiel Sprick uh, and uh, Ilya Sipman, who wanted to study the, the um, an, an AFN tip in water. So the, in fact, they were, uh, the objective was to study the interface between platinum and gold at the time. And the idea was that uh, in the platinum, you have a fixed potential condition. All the uh, atoms should feel the same potential. And so they uh, suggested to, to model these, uh, these atoms by using uh, Gaussian charges. That and uh, which amplitude is going to fluctuate? So we we go back again to uh, to um, to uh, a kind of charge equilibration scheme. Uh, but in that case, so you see, 1995 this was a time where a Carpinello method was uh, was uh, much more used than, uh, than now. And so they uh, proposed uh, to you to simulate the system using an extending Lagrangian approach. 
So then this, uh, this work was left out, I would say, for quite a long time until Paul Madden started to work on it and to adapt it to the case of, um, of uh, electrochemical systems. And then we did the follow-up in, uh, in my group. So the main changes were to apply this to two electrodes. So in that case, we don't fix the voltage of inside a single electrode, but we fix the uh, difference of potential between the two. Uh, since due to the geometry of the system, we use 2D eval summation for, the, for everything. So for point charge, equation charges, and even dipoles, because we can have some uh, induced dipoles in the system. And instead of uh, using carbonyl type molecular dynamics, we do bond oppenheimer which means that we have to calculate the charge at each step so at the beginning this was made using um, conjugate gradients mostly but in fact in most cases we have rigid electrodes so they don't move and uh, it's much it's uh, even simpler to do it using uh, by computing the matrix uh, inverting it and solving uh, at each step uh, using this approach so now we are, our code, which allows to do this, have, has been released last year, or no, two years ago. It's called Metal Walls, and you're, it's, uh, you can get this, uh, get it at this address. And now it even works on GPU, so it's uh, it's quite uh, efficient. It's not as efficient as a code like LAMPS, for example, but still uh, you can uh, simulate quite large systems right now. Uh, recently, we we saw that uh, for systems like carbon, the problem. Uh, to treat them as perfect metal uh, is not uh, a good idea because you can have some um, some uh, screening and uh, some uh, they they are not good metals in fact and so we uh, based on a uh, um, proposition by Lideric Bouquet we started to implement a Thomas Fermi uh, model so the idea that the Thomas Fermi functional accounts for the kinetic energy of the electrons and so uh, what we did is to assume that the charge perturbation along, uh, on each side and on each atom is small compared to the, to the total electron density at, the, at uh, this position. And so this allows you to do a Taylor expansion. Uh, and the, the, the terms are quite easy to derive. And you see that here, uh, the first term is, is just a constant that you, you don't care about. The second one involves the Fermi energy of the material. But if you have the same material on the two sides, it will cancel out, so you don't have to care anymore about it. And the most important one is the third term, which is quadratic in the charges. And it depends on the quantity, which is the Thomas family length, which measures the screening inside the electrode. And then by, of course, by looking at the equations and comparing them with the equations we were using before, we could see that in fact, this was already a bit uh, included in the model, in the in the model by Michiel, because there is a Gaussian width that is also uh, impacting the the second order term of the charges. So, in fact, there was already a bit of uh, this ingredient taken into account, but we never changed it in, in previous simulations. So now, what happens when we include this explicitly? So uh, we did first simulations of a simple sodium chloride solution in contact with typical gold electrodes and we change the Thomas Fermi length. And you can see that when you go from zero to five, so uh, you, uh, you allow the charge to, uh, to be more and more screened. And this, is, uh, this uh, impacts a lot, the potential, the, the potential across, um, across the simulation cell. So the liquid appears not to be much affected because we always have the same um, oscillations inside the liquid part uh, of the of the simulation cell, but in the metallic side, you see that there is more and more screening, and you recover the the, uh, the potential difference we apply here is two volt, so we have minus one volt and one volt on the two electrodes only after almost ten layers when the Thomas family length is quite large. Then the important quantity when you simulate this kind of uh, systems is to look at the interfacial capacitance because this tells you the um, response of your metal to, uh, to a change of potential. And in fact, it's a quantity that you need to optimize in a, in, in a supercapacitor. And you can see that uh, something that is expected, of course, is that the more you screen uh, your metal, the, more, uh, the, the lower the, the capacitance is. But what is, uh, what is interesting here to see that in previous work, uh, the idea was to, to, to do the hypothesis that the, there were three different capacitance, 
two that were due to the um, that, that were called quantum capacitance and were only due to the screening inside the metal and the third one was uh, interfacial capacitance due to the liquid uh, but if you apply this um, this uh, this approximation you see that you will uh, you will uh, neglect some effect and you will uh, quite importantly have uh, too low capacitance and this is due to the interplay between the liquid and the charge and of course when you're when you allow more screening, your liquid will not respond in the same way as in a metal, and so you cannot you cannot expect that all the the effects are are decoupled. Then we started to to study more the, to go back to the gold water interface. So this is very recent in the past two years. Uh, here, that's a simulation from uh, almost uh, ten years ago by David Lino, and he was at that time what he showed is that the depending on the conditions and depending of course on your force field you have this kind of, um, of fluctuation of the of the water absorption so you have a very strong adsorb layer and then you are allowed to uh, you have a, a kind of liquid vapor interface which is a bit hydrophobic and uh, and is fluctuating a lot uh, in the in on very short time scales so we came back to to the system and we tried to see what was the effect of the um, of the metallicity and again, we simulated a, a very simple system, so sodium chloride in contact with gold. And so with previous parameters, so the one that were used uh, a long time ago by Michiel and, uh, and then never changed by us or anybody else, we had this kind of picture. So you had uh, so the cation, uh, all the ions, so sodium and chloride, they will tend to adsorb in between the first adsorb layer of water and the, and the second layer, so uh, they they go in fact in this kind of uh, of liquid vapor cavities that were highlighted in the, in the previous slide. Then what happens when we increase the metallicity? So this was made in that case by uh, enlarging the Gaussians on the go on the gold atoms. It's not very easy to see at first sight, but in fact uh, there are more and more ions that absorb. So um, of course the since the numbers are small, we don't see much on, the, on this picture, but uh, the analysis is very clear. And in addition, we started to observe some uh, other adsorption modes. And in particular, we can we start to see some inner sphere adsorption for the cation. So it means that the sodium ion is jumping the first adsorb layer because it really it starts to be more and more attracted by the gold. And you see this kind of, um, of uh, structures that, uh, that appear. Then again, we looked at the impact on the capacitance, and you see that when you increase the Gaussian width, so when you go more and more metallic, you have a large uh, variation of the capacitance, in particular in the presence of sodium chloride, because you switch from a value of five microfarads per square centimeter to something like 30. And it, we tried also another point uh, with an even larger Gaussian, but then the capacitance can reach 100 or 150 microfarads per square centimeter, but the time scale of the adsorption starts to be very, very long, longer than uh, even 10 or 15 nanoseconds. So we don't have enough statistics to be sure of, the, of this data. And so now, how does this compare with experiments? Uh, you have to know that it's not very easy to extract capacitance from experiments because in general, the double layer effects are hidden by uh, specific adsorption, in particular by uh, species like chloride or iodine on, uh, on metals. Uh, you can have some, um, and of course, uh, electrochemical window of water is quite narrow, so you don't, you cannot uh, study a lot of potentials. But the expected numbers are usually around 20 or 50 microfarads per square centimeters. There are some recent experiments by um, by copper on platinum and also by a group with whom we collaborated who studied uh, either single crystal electrodes or uh, nanoparticles and then the capacitance can get much larger around 120 microfarads per square centimeters so we still need to to make sure of this uh, there are also some ab initio molecular dynamics that were made in the, two, uh, the past three years. So one by uh, the group of uh, Adabella Celoni and the second one by uh, Yun Cheng uh, in China. In both cases, you get numbers around 50, 30 microfarads per square centimeter. 
But uh, the comparison is not so easy because in Abinishu MD, they just put some counter ions on the electrode. And so the concentration of ions is not controlled. So we cannot know whether the, the comparison is relevant or not. But at least the numbers point towards uh, the large end of the numbers we had in our simulations. So now I will finish with a very short uh, illustration of uh, what can be done in terms of catalysis. So that's uh, also a very uh, recent experimental work, uh, a very recent work. So in, in collaboration with uh, an experimental team in Paris, so we're interested in, there are more and more studies now in which water is diluted in either ionic liquids or solvents in order to decrease its reactivity or at least to modify it. And so in that case, they were interested in understanding the mechanisms of, um, of reactivity of water. And so they tried to dilute it in acetonitrile. So now water is not really a solvent, but, uh, but a reactant. And there is a salt, which is lithium perchlorate in order to conduct the, the electricity. And so in this work, what, uh, what we did was to change the water concentration and the lithium concentration either independently or together, and to see what we could learn about water reactivity based on, uh, on this study. So the first step was to start from a very dilute solution and increase the water concentration. And so on the left here, you have the electrochemical response. So you see that uh, the behavior is a bit different because you are passed from a peak to a wave, but uh, this is due to some uh, surface effects and surface passivation that can occur. But the important thing is that the potential at which the reaction is triggered does not change. So it means that starting from the, the initial system, increasing the amount of water does not lead to, uh, to better, um, to, to an enhanced reactivity. And so we, uh, we confronted this result to, uh, to, some, um, to, the, to the simulation results. And in fact, what we see is that in all these systems, when, uh, when the lithium remains dilute and we increase the amount of water, the water goes on the surface as either isolated molecule or single cluster of lithium ions. And so it means that it's mostly this small uh, compound that will, uh, that will react with the electrode. Then if you look at uh, interaction between lithium ion and water, or between two water molecules. So in that case, we, we just uh, did a simple calculation of the potential of mean force. And you see that the lithium is in fact attracting very strongly, strongly the water molecule. And so there is a very strong effect of the lithium on the, on the reactivity. But then, uh, so it means that the, in that case, in this specific system, the, uh, the most reactive molecules will be the ones that are already coordinated to water and putting to the two lithium, sorry and putting more and more water will not, will not change things. Then we increase the amount of salt. So either we are by letting in unchanged amount of water or by increasing it as well, but uh, the results are quite similar. What we observe is that the reactivity is increased. And so you can see it because uh, the wave is uh, moving to the right here. And so in that case, we could not see anything on the, on the local scale, but the most important, most interesting thing we observed is that there is a kind of a nanostructuration of the system. So this is quite famous for water acetonitrile mixture, but it's even increased by the fact by the salt. So the salt is playing the role of glue because it really wants to go inside the water and so it will attract the water. And so you can, you, you end up with a biphasic system. So I did not show it here, but we also had some uh, SACS experiments, small angle X-ray scattering experiments that also show this uh, nano patterning. And so in that case, what you observe is that you form this kind of nanobubble that can come close to the electrode. And so our interpretation of this effect was that now due to this increase of salt and to the presence of large domains, once the water has reacted, uh, you can have some uh, proton transfer reaction that occur within the domain. And so it will tend to stabilize the product and to, uh, to, to not allow the reformation of the water molecules uh, at the surface. So in conclusion, uh, we, we are mainly working in, uh, in the group in two directions. So the first one is to have better models for, for the system and to put as much electronic structure information as we can in, uh, in the, at least in the electrostatics for the moment. 
and to apply this to understand uh, the double layer structure and beyond the case of water we have a lot of studies on uh, on uh, systems like uh, ionic liquids or complex uh, more complex electrolytes uh, and so this is uh, some uh, some ongoing work and i would like to thank you for for your attention <laughs>